Store News is the record holder for Stellar Cool. Claps of thunder announce this process somewhere on Earth as often as 50 times a second. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Ladies and gentlemen, this article comes from the University of Sydney. And as a note of interest, I find this personally fascinating. Because I've had to fly to Texas and California back a couple times the last few months. So my face is always pressed up against the window seat window in the airplane, watching as we pass over ground 500 miles an hour. Some pretty jaw-dropping visuals I'm including for you here. And the very last time, as I saw a bunch of monoliths that just grew out of the ground from nowhere, I thought to myself, there's no way volcanoes did this, man. Seems way closer to the terraforming situation the Electric Universe talks about all the time. Follow me, Pete? All right, so with that in mind, let's continue. Remember, those guys are the geologist geniuses. I'm just some YouTuber, man. News dash. Geologists discover how Australia's highest mountain was created. The 15th of March, 2016. Geologists from the University of Sydney and the California Institute of Technology have solved the mystery of how Australia's highest mountain came to exist. And first of all, let's just say they were wrong. Uh, who's going to prove them wrong? You know what I'm saying? So they think they've solved the mystery. We will never know because until the James Webb Space Telescope is built, we can't look back at time. <laughs> That was a joke. I don't think the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be able to look back in time. But they do. Yeah, scientists really believe that. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down, so let's keep going. A team spearheaded by Professor Dietmar Muller from the university's School of Geosciences used high-performance computing code to investigate the cause of the uplift which created Mount Kosuki Zikoko and the Australian Alps. All right. My overarching answer would probably be God, but then I think that there would be a normal process that would form it. And so, to scientists, computers are kind of like God. It has all the answers, right? So, I'm not surprised by any of this, are you? Let's take a moment to gander at an aerial image of Eastern Australia's topography. And you tell me, how did those things form? Wait, I'll give you 10 seconds, go. So look at those stalactite looking things. There, 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 there. I wouldn't think volcanoes did that. How do you know they solved the mystery? Anyway, geologists from the University of Sydney and the California Institute of Technology have solved the mystery of how Australia's highest mountain, Mount Kosi Uzuko, and surrounding Alps came to exist. Most of the world's mountain belts are the result of two continents colliding. Ergo, the Himalayas. Or volcanism. That still doesn't explain those stalagmites or stalactites or troglodytes or troglomites. They're just sticking out, man. The mountains of Australia's eastern highlands, stretching from northeastern Queensland to western Victoria, are an exception. Until now, no one knew how they'd formed. A research team spearheaded from Professor Dietmar Mueller from the University School of Geosciences used high-performance computing code to investigate the cause of the uplift which created the mountain range. The team found the answer in the mountain's unusually strong gravity field. Whoa. The gravity field let us suspect the region might be pushed up from below. So we started looking at the underlying mantle, the layer of rock between the Earth's core and its crust, said Professor Mueller. Well, I just said deja vu. That can't be good. Uh, that probably means me and Sage are going to fight again. The team found the mantle under Australia's east coast has been uplifted twice. The first occurred during the early Cretaceous period, when Australia was part of Gondwanda land. Gondwanda. What? Over Earth's lifespan, or geological time, the large solid mantle has continuously been stirred by old, cold tectonic plate sections sinking into the deep mantle under another plate. This process, called subduction, do you want me to subduct you, baby, was occurring during the early Cretaceous during the early Cretaceous period. Early Australia was drifting over a subducted plate graveyard, giving it a sinking feeling, said co-author Dr. Kara Matthews, a former PhD candidate at the University Now at the University of Oxford. But around 100 million years ago, subduction came to a halt, resulting in the entire region being uplifted, forming the Eastern Highlands. I'm confused. Somebody's gonna have to explain this to me. Oh, also let me say that I also believe that the sun sends energy into our planet through the poles, it makes it to the core, transferring it to plasma, and our planet slowly grows. That's a Thor news theory. You can make fun of it all you want. I'm sticking to it. But we don't know, except these guys know. Although their answer is confusing me. The next 50 million years was a time of relative inactivity. 
That's wonderful. Then about 50 million years ago, Australia's separation from Antarctica accelerated and it started moving north to northeast, gradually taking it closer to a vast mantle upwelling called the South Pacific Super Swell. Wow. Well, that sounds super swell, you know, said co-author Dr. Nicholas Flament. This provided a second upward push to the eastern highlands as they gradually rode over the edge of the super swell. Professor Mueller said the two-phase uplift suggested by supercomputer models is supported by geological features from rivers in the snow mountains where river incision occurred in two distinct phases. The model we built explains why the iconic Australian Alps exist and is also a new mechanism for figuring out how some other mountainous regions elsewhere in the world were formed. The team's findings have been published in Earth and Planetary Sciences. So let me go ahead and say congratulations. I think you guys have come up with an excellent guess. But at this point, I think that's all it is. I think my stuff is guesses, and I think the people are watching. Your shit's guesses. Nobody knows what happened 500 years ago. Science likes to say it does, but science says a lot of shit, man. And I don't know if you know the science is like some giant body, so that if like, one guy has a theory and it's wrong, science isn't wrong, it's just that guy that's wrong, but if one guy has a theory and that theory is right, then science is right. See how that works? It's a lot like the Catholic Church. <laughs> it's a great note to end on. Anyway, peace out. God bless everybody. And I'm not anti-science. I'm anti-bullshit. Unless that bullshit is funny. Then it's kind of okay. Peace out. Talk to you soon.